Hi all, this is Dana again. In this video I'm going to be showing you a slightly more advanced technique for starting and finishing your threads off. So in previous videos I was talking about using a small knot at, on the end of your thread to anchor your thread from the back, and that works really well. I still use it occasionally for certain situations, uh, but it, one thing it does do is it does leave little lumps on the back of your fabric. If you're going to be framing your piece later that can be an issue depending on uh, what you're actually stitching onto and, and your actual pattern. So in this method uh, I'm going to be teaching you is, uh, the first one is going to be called the loop method, and that's what I use to start my threads, and I'll be teaching you the pin stitch, which is what I use to finish my threads. So the loop method, uh, I can show you right here. So you can see here, this is the end of my thread, and it's got a nice little loop in it. It's actually one doubled piece of thread. So uh, I'll show you here, you can see I got my needle threaded there. So it's one long piece of thread that I've doubled to create two strands. Uh, for me that works really well for the 14 count uh, Ada fabric. And uh, this the loop method will only work for even numbers of strands, so two strands, four strands, six strands. It will not work for an uneven number of strands unfortunately. But depending on what you're doing, usually you can figure out how to do your uh, pattern with an even number of strands. So this works really well. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be doing this a little different than how I, I do it in reality. Uh, I usually do it from the back, uh, but I'm going to be doing it from the front to show you so it makes it a little easier to see. So I'm going to be putting my needle into this one here. I'm going to be stitching these two stitches right there. So I pull it through. And you're not obviously going to be wanting to pull all the way through. Just enough, pretty much, just to turn your needle around. And I'll be coming back up my corner here, if I can get my needle in. I'm using my other hand so it's a little trickier. There we go. Pull the thread out. Alright, so what you're going to be wanting to do with the loop method is you've got your loop in your hand here. You're just going to be hooking your needle through the loop and then pulling your thread through the loop. As you can see, it creates, it actually catches around the loop. And you keep pulling slowly. Like I said, I do this from the back, but it does work from the front as well. Bam! And there is your little thread. You can see it's you can pull it a little bit tighter. There you go. So what I'm going to be wanting to do is actually go around the edge of that loop to get through to the back. And then I'll be continuing to stitch. Sorry, I keep knocking my uh, sewing frame. There we go. So you can see it's perfectly anchored now. It's not going to go anywhere. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be continuing to stitch with this piece of thread until it's ready to cut. And then I'll come back to the video and I will show you how I finish my threads, which is using the pin stitch. All right, I will see you shortly. Thanks very much. Alright, so I'm back, so I've finished up most of my thread. I've just got a little tiny tail left here. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be finishing this uh, one stitch I've got going right here. And then I'm going to be coming up in the stitch next to it, so this one here, and coming up in between the threads. So you can see how the Ada fabric is actually consisted of a bunch of threads overlapped and it creates this kind of patch of solid fabric in the middle. So what I'm going to be doing is actually coming up and going through the fabric right here in this little central piece of fabric. Usually tapestry needles you use them because you're only supposed to be coming up and down through the actual holes in the fabric, which is why the tapestry needles are blunt, but in this case in order to do a pin stitch you actually do need to pierce the fabric. So if you're having a hard time piercing your fabric or if you're using something um, uh, like linen or something like that that's a little harder to pierce with a tapestry needle, you can always switch out your needle to a sharper one uh, in order to do your pin stitch. All right, so I'm going to be finishing off this thread, or this uh, stitch here, and then I'm going to come up right next to it. So what I try to do when I'm doing this is I try to actually come up between some of the stitches. So you can see I've kind of split the threads apart there. This actually helps to hide the pin stitch. Of course, it only works for using this kind of of fabric, but 
it does work. So I've come up there and I'm going to be going back in just directly above it. You can either go horizontally or vertically, it doesn't matter. And you pull tight and you come up again through the same, try to get through the same first hole that you created. So some instructions that I've seen actually say you can snip your thread right there. For me, I found that's not quite uh, taut enough. It doesn't quite give enough strength and the, the pin stitch can come undone at that point. So what I actually do is I go through again, just to anchor it that little bit more. Go through again. Yeah, you can see the tapestry needle It is a little harder to pierce, but it's okay. I manage. And come up again through the same hole if I can. All right, so from there, that's the end of your pin stitch. And I'm gonna snip it. I love these little snips. These are amazing. I can lie completely flat against the fabric. And snip, and there you go. So you can see it actually pretty much hides the stitch. If you rub it a little bit, your stitch, your pin stitch pretty much disappears. You can see I've got another pin stitch right there. You can see I've got another one right there. They kind of hide. Occasionally they do stick out a little bit like that, uh, which makes it sometimes seem when you're stitching that that's actually a piece of, um, or like one full stitch if you're not paying attention. But yeah, for me, those are just my pin stitches. So that's why I do the stitch, the pin stitch like that, because you can actually relatively hide it, which is nice because then you're not ending up with a bunch of tails everywhere. You're not ending up with any loose threads everywhere and it just makes the piece neater as you're working on it. I always will go through uh, a piece of fabric that's actually going to be covered by another stitch. I will never do it on the border as I haven't actually decided how I'm going to be framing this piece yet once it's done. Speaking of which, I probably can't see it very well. I'm just going to back the camera up a little bit here. But yeah, so you can't really see it. That's uh, I'm working on a piece. It's uh, my Michelangelo piece. It's a chalk and charcoal drawing that actually turned into a pattern. So you can see his chest here, his pecs, uh, this is his bicep, and I'm working on his arm coming across his, his body right now. Uh, if you'd like to see more of this piece in progress, I am taking pictures of it weekly and sticking them on my uh, weekly newsletter that I send out. So you can uh, go to my website and sign up for my newsletter. You'll see weekly progress as well as uh, I do updates of my blog posts every week, uh, any interesting news I come across for creativity, cross-stitch, art, drawing, whatever. Uh, any little tips I have, like this little spider thing that I actually use to hold my pattern. Well, I hold my phone with it, which is kind of neat. It's like this little bendy thing you can bend and I actually hook it onto my frame like that. And then I stick my phone right there, because what I do is I take a picture of my pattern off my computer with my phone and then I use that as my pattern holder. For me it's just easier than having a piece of paper sitting next to me. So that's how I work anyway. So yeah, my website has all kinds of little tips and tricks and random things like that. It's also got a post about the, the frame that I'm currently using, which is uh, this little, it's like basically uh, put together uh, shelving, plastic shelving units that I broke in half and made a little frame so my scroll bar frame can stand upright in it. So yeah, this is all kinds of stuff on my website and I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave comments in the bottom of the video and I will talk to you later. Bye for now!